Okay, so that's the build finished. It's actually run quicker than when I was doing testing. I'm not sure why, but <clears throat> it's 31 minutes to do a complete build. So let's go into the root of the build and you can see there's all the directories created there. Let's look at LFS release. You can see there's 11.3 in there as you'd expect. OS release. Again, all the details look correct there. And LSB release. Again, that all looks good. Um, we can have a look at the bin directory. So there's all the executables. Um, let's look at SBIN. Again, all the sort of high level executables. So you can see it's uh, created stuff. That no doubt would run had I chosen to. Oops. Had I chosen to make this uh, bootable system. Uh, let's look at lib and user lib. So I think they may even resolve to the same. Uh, yes, they do. Yeah, users pointing at user lib just like bin is pointing at user bin and s bin <laughs> as well. So yeah, there's uh, just proof that it's created all these executables. In fact, if I do an ls cell, you can see that they've just been created within the last half an hour. There's the time at the moment, 10 to 12. You can see a lot of these are created um, about 20 minutes ago. Some just a couple of minutes ago. Um, let's look a few more in ETC. Uh, Let's look at resolve.conf. Yeah, that looks okay. Uh, input RC is one of the text files that's put in as a here doc. So that looks good. Um, let's go into sysconfig. And you can see, uh, well, let's start with clock. Yep, that's set to one, so it's using universal coordinated time. Uh, console. Again, that's taken all the configuration that I specified. Um, I have config for the interface. Again, that looks all correct. So, yeah, it looks like it's all been completed. Now, a particular note, if you are developing with this or doing something other than just building a system to boot from, um, these files at the top, it appears that for every stage, there's a, a script that's run. It touches a file with the same name. Um, so as you saw, if I scroll back far enough, yeah, so for example, 904 usage, uh, 1002 kernel. Um, there's one of these files that's been touched, so they're all empty. And I reckon that's probably used just to um, allow the script to continue. Because when it breaks or you, you break it yourself with Control C, for example, um, if you rerun it, it'll carry on from the point that it last um, was successful. Uh, so for example, if 873 built and it was in the middle of sysv, conf, uh, sysv init 874, uh, if you rerun it, it would restart at 874. And I think it uses these um, empty files as a, a sort of checkpoint as to where to carry on. There's that tar file it created. As you can see, it says chapter five and the date and time it created it. So that was over 20 minutes ago. So it probably is quite early on and probably therefore in the wrong place. And also note that it is a tar file, not an XZ file. Um, let's do Yeah, it is a tar archive. It's not a, an XZ archive that's been named wrong. Um, <clears throat> 
other things worth noting here the logs in the logs directory so you can tail these while they're running um, if you're on a slow machine you want to see the progress but otherwise uh, you can interrogate them to observe what was happening Oops. during the compile there's a complete log of what happened there's a start time uh, the amount of space on the disk which I imagine the script uses because it compiles these all together into a, a summary uh, if you've checked that option that is um, but yeah you can just page through and examine the whole build and you can see the total time it took and the amount of disk space afterwards um, but before it's tidied up so you can ascertain how much disk space was used uh, for that build um, the other thing to note is if you have tests turned on there's a test logs directory this will probably be empty uh, oh no it's created an output for all of them but they'll all be empty anyway um, if I do that one for example it's just got a timestamp that's obviously when it started building um, that particular one when it tried to run the test and obviously there's no test run so they're all all going to have just that timestamp in them uh, yeah they're all 10 bytes long so um, yeah if you were testing you could just double check the test line up with what's in the book or maybe compare it with the previous run you've done based on maybe some optimization or some changes or some patches you've been doing to the packages um, and last of all um, there's this report file which gives you a report of the SBUs for every single package So as you can see, it gives you some basic information about the build, all the parameters that are used in JH, ALFS, and then some information about the system that was run on, basically the CPU type, uh, the amount of memory that's available, and it gives a designation of what an SPU is computed to have been based on, oh, that's interesting, it's 17 seconds, I'm sure it said 18 seconds when it printed it up. Uh, maybe it rounds it up perhaps on the printout but anyway um, yeah so you can see for each package uh, an amount of time that's taken and a calculation of uh, the SBU for that package to compare with against the book and that is for every single package in all the stages and a final summary uh, 101 SBUs we use to build the system so 101 times 17 seconds should equal roughly 30 seconds yeah 30 minutes sorry and in total installed files was roughly 1.2 gigabytes so that's that's quite a useful thing to have especially again if you're making changes you want to compare maybe compile times so that's it really the the only thing other thing maybe i can say is that if you were to rerun this you'd obviously want to adjust the output directory so all you do is maybe in, in my example just change the output to lfs02 and it would start again um, in fact if i run that if i go to jh lfs and do make again um i'm going to not build settings general settings yep just change that to two so i've got a new location and that's all i need to do if i'd maybe modified a a patch or something there's nothing else to do with the configuration i'll just do q to quick yes to save it oops what happened there um yes to save it right okay and again because i haven't created that directory it's complaining so if i make the, that directory rerun the script if I want to run it yes oh I did oh, I've made it in this directory haven't I fs2 make it in the parent directory where it should be rerun quit yes that's okay now all the settings should be the same because I haven't changed anything else. And rebuild. You cannot rebuild. Well, first I thought I had that settings set. 
Yeah, it's there, so I'm not sure. Ah, oh, right, yes, I know why. It's because I've created a new directory, so it's effectively creating it from scratch. So in that case, I need to uncheck that. Save those settings. And this time it will work. Uh, so you can see it's... Um, well, we can see actually that why that would be a good idea to have the document downloaded and in a separate place, such as the source archive, because um, it looks like it's downloaded again. But basically what I've done there is I've recreated a brand new session to build in LFS02. And you can see its status is the same as the LFS01 was in uh, just over half an hour ago. And you can see that's still there. So I can now rerun it with my changes and do a compare afterwards. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I appreciate a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to the channel if you'd want to hear about more videos similar to this one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.